Don't ever think that because you've got a turbocharged car, you can be lazy. Yes, the car will have some torque down low, but that sweet nectar of performance and power is always going to be above the boost threshold. You wanna go fast, you wanna make choo-choo noises, you wanna hear psh as you change gear, but you don't understand that you need some revs to make this all happen. I'm gonna teach you the differences between turbo lag and boost threshold. There's a really good video about this topic from Engineering Explained. I've linked it down below, and that video will teach you what's happening under the bonnet in ways that I never could. But what I can do is give you practical examples and demonstrations of what turbo lag is and how boost threshold works. And how if you understand this, you can actually get the most out of your turbocharged car. Throughout this video, I'm gonna be showing live statistics on my dashboard. Now my car is quite modern and it has these features built in. If you've got a car that doesn't, you probably want an OBD reader. My one is from OBD11 who have sponsored this video. I'm gonna show you a few things that make OBD11 stand out before we get on the road and I show you all about boost threshold. OBD11 is compatible with BMW, the Volkswagen group, and the Toyota group. It's the easiest thing in the world to use. You just stick this down here into your OBD2 port and you simply tap to scan. And I've actually got two faults on my nearly new M2. Let's see what's wrong with it. So I've got a sound amplifier fault and a body electronics fault. Let's go ahead and clear those. The thing that sets OBD11 apart are these one click apps. I'm gonna go into active sound design deactivation. I'm gonna make the ASD inactive. What this will do is it will stop the car making the fake engine sound. Sounds a bit rubbish and a lot of people don't like. This will actually let you code that out. We've now removed that horrible fake sound and I'm gonna keep this off for the rest of the video. If you wanna get yourself one of these bad boy OBD11 devices, use my link in the description and you will get 10% off. The code is MIC. Let's head out of here and let's talk a little bit about turbo lag. There are two absolutely key things I need you guys to watch while I give these demonstrations. The first is the RPM, how many times the engine is turning over per minute. This is really important because it will define our boost threshold. I actually don't even know what the boost threshold is gonna be in this car. I think it's about 3000 RPM, but we're gonna go on the road and we're gonna find out. The second thing you really need to watch is this PSI gauge. This is telling us how much boost the turbos in this car are making. So this is our gauge to see if we're actually reaching boost threshold. And then once we've exceeded it, we'll talk about turbo lag and how to understand that too. Right, let's go. So people would think, I'm gonna put my foot down now, I'm not getting a lot of acceleration. That's turbo lag, right? No, that's, well, it's actually two things. It's number one, I'm in the wrong gear. But number two, I'm not at the boost threshold. So if we try that again at 2000 RPM, watch how high that PSI gauge gets. All right, we got up to about 12 PSI there. That's okay, but it's not great. Let's try that again at about 3000 RPM. All right, that time we got a lot more acceleration and we got up to about 15 PSI. That's good. Let's try it again with even more RPM. So now at three and a half, if I put my foot down, watch the PSI. It's straight up to the maximum. So what does that tell us? Our boost threshold is about three, three and a half thousand RPM. So if we're down here at two, put our foot down, boost takes a long time to build. That is what it's all about. If you're in the wrong gear, you're not even giving your engine a chance. If we drop down to second here, we're right up in the RPMs. We're above 4,000, we're making no boost right now. As soon as we get into it, <laughs> we make a lot of boost. And that is very simply 
just because we're in the right gear and we're above the boost threshold. Okay, so we've got the boost threshold out the way, that's good. What's turbo lag all about then? Well, the thing is, every single turbo lag query that I've ever seen people have is because they're doing the test wrong. If I'm gonna do, try and do a test for turbo lag right now, I'm at 2000 RPM and I put my foot down, and it takes forever for the car to get going, it's not a fair test. I'm not giving the car a fair shake. I haven't understood how turbos work. The real test of turbo lag is when you're in the correct gear, you're above the boost threshold, you put your foot down, and then if there's a delay, if you have to wait for the turbos to take a breath, that's when you've got real turbo lag. When you're above the boost threshold, but it takes the turbos a long time to spool up. To be honest, with modern turbos, this is not a problem ever. I'm gonna show you the time in between when I want boost and when I have boost. Foot's on the floor, I've got boost. <laughs> there, there is an instantaneous delay. I'm gonna show you that again, out of the boost threshold at the same speed. Foot's on the floor, now I have boost. Don't take my word for it, watch the gauge. The gauge doesn't lie, it's telling you what the boost pressure is. Now this car's got twin turbos, so it's a slightly unfair test. The same is true of big single turbos. As long as you're above that boost threshold, you're gonna get great throttle response if you're driving the car properly to its strengths. So I don't wanna hear no more people complain about modern cars and turbo lag because they have very little. You just need to know how to drive them. Put yourself at the beginnings of a power band, put your foot down. <laughs> and you'll get great acceleration. So what does that mean for us overall in a turbocharged car? Well, it just means forget about what people told you about turbo torque and not having to change gear and change gear. Keep your engine in that rev band get the most out of it work for that power that's the only way you're going to get it so learn your car get into more boost and drive it hard and enjoy it knowing that you're extracting the performance out of it now disclaimer this doesn't apply to every car if you've got a big turbo supra big single turbo supra this doesn't apply to you. You're gonna have to spool up your turbos even when you're in the power band and you're above boost threshold and you've done everything perfectly because ultimately your turbo's so big that it's gonna take some time to spin up. Same is true even for some modern cars, especially the Mercedes turbocharged four cylinders, CLA 35, A45, that do genuinely have turbo lag. But those cars are few and far between. Even the cars that you would think would have the really worst turbo lag, most four-cylinder turbo cars like Golf GTIs and Golf Rs, they actually exhibit the least. As soon as you're above their boost threshold, which is actually quite low, those Golf Rs and Golf GTIs, they need two and a half, maybe even 2,000 RPM to get full boost those turbos spin up super fast. This car needing three and a half, even 4,000 RPM to do its best work is actually kind of an outlier. And this car needs a lot more revs than most do. And that's because this car is actually quite peaky in its power delivery. It has a good amount of torque down low, but it does its best work right at the top of the rev range. So this car has a high boost threshold. You will find some cars like that, but when it comes to actual turbo lag, there's very few cars that have genuine amounts of painful turbo lag. So, uh, 
This came in the post the other day with a letter signed by the CEO of YouTube. A hundred thousand subscribers. A hundred thousand of you guys. All getting better at driving and understanding cars better. Watching me make my stupid jokes. I really do appreciate every single one of you. I can't quite explain how much this actually means to me. I, I, I'm kind of getting emotional. It's hard to, to express. I'm, it's a goal that I've been working towards for a long time. And fuck me, I've actually done it. Someone left a comment the other day that said they've been binge watching all of my car videos. Because at this point, I have so many. I have like a video about every element of driving, it feels like. And to think people are binge watching the stuff I'm making is is ridiculous. So thank you all. I, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you.